city of downtown Edmonton. So we, our main campus of Northwest College is located in the city of uh, Edmonton. And Edmonton is the capital city of the province of Alberta. Probably a lot of you already know that, but just for someone who doesn't know, Edmonton is a big city. Um, and there are only six big cities in Canada. Um, and Edmonton is one of those big cities uh, which have more than 1 million population, okay? Um, so this is a very beautiful view of the downtown. Um, okay, a little bit about Edmonton city, uh, why a student should choose to come to Edmonton. So there are a lot of benefits to come to Edmonton and Alberta, which sometimes I think students overlook. Uh, so one of the big benefits of Edmonton city, it's, it's a very cost-effective city. So the cost of living is very less. So as I mentioned before, um, there are six big cities in Canada, which have more than 1 million population. Edmonton is one of them. But in spite of being a big city, it is one of the most affordable big city in Canada. So the expenses, you know, uh, if you compare with a small city in Canada, so the expense wise, it's very comparable to the small city. So that's why we call in Edmonton, you live in a big city and an expense of a small city. So that's one big benefit that you are in a big city, so you get all the opportunities of a big city, but you're spending the money, which is of a very small city. Then taxes wise, um, the taxes are very less, around 5%. So because of that, the cost um, of anything that you will buy in Alberta is going to cost you less. So again, you're saving money uh, because of less taxes in Alberta. Also immigration wise, in Canada, every province have their own uh, immigration policy. So we have a very attractive immigration policy, which is called Alberta Immigrant Nominee Program. In short, we call it AINP. Also, Alberta is the third largest economy in Canada. Um, it is a diverse economy, oil and gas, healthcare, educational services, social work, agriculture, retail and wholesale trade. So it's a very robust economy and there are a lot of job opportunities. And last but not least, um, so Alberta is a place which have the highest minimum wage in Canada, $15 an hour. So because of that, you know, people make more money in Alberta on average, as you see here, comparison with other two provinces, Ontario and British Columbia, people make more money. So in summary, um, Alberta it offers a value proposition to the student is that it's a place where you make more money, you spend less money, uh, less taxes, more immigration options, and a robust economy so you can find jobs. So, you know, this is a, a big benefit for students, Alberta as a destination that it offers. Okay, a little bit about the, the economic outlook of Edmonton city. Uh, so it's a big city. So the labor force of the Edmonton city is a little bit over 800,000 people who work within the city. The economic growth rate of the city is 4%. So it's higher than the Canadian growth rate. Canadian growth rate is little over 1.5%. So it's it's a the growth of Edmonton is higher than the growth of Canada overall. Also, it's a growing city. Uh, the population is growing every year by 2%. And the reason why the population is increasing because it's affordable city. So right now, if you're looking to buy a house as a, as a new immigrant who comes with a family, in Toronto or Vancouver, and there's nothing less than $1 million, which is a lot of times new immigrants cannot afford that. Whereas in Edmonton city, it's pretty much half the price and it's, it's affordable. If two people in a family are working full time, you can easily manage a home. So that's why a lot of young families, new immigrants are coming to Edmonton because it's affordable to live. And there are also a lot of job opportunities. In Edmonton, the jo top job sectors uh, which are right now and also which going to grow in the future. That's what the prediction of the city of Edmonton is, that this is the jobs which will be in demand in future, which is going to be healthcare, retail and wholesale trade. That's an essential services sector. Then logistic and supply chain, which is again another essential services sector. Then green energy solutions, uh, which is environmental science. Then digital technologies. There's a lot of jobs for therapists, for counselors and also in businesses, mainly entrepreneurship, finance, and accounting. So it's, it has, these sectors are the highlight. Uh, if people are going to go in these sectors, yes, they have definitely more promising uh, career outcomes. Also by year 2023, if things come back to normal, 
uh, then the CP is expecting that there's going to be a demand of 60,000 workers across all occupations in Edmonton. So there's going to be a lot of jobs in the Edmonton economy um, by a very near future within roughly around two to three years. Okay, so this is a little bit about the economic outlook. So hopefully this gives you a little bit idea. Um, also a little bit about the uh, what kind of job sectors and, and what is the main job sectors within Edmonton City? Because a lot of times students are curious to know when I go to Edmonton, what kind of jobs are available? Um, so anything that you see here marked green here, uh, those are the sectors which are growing. So those sectors are growing even in the pandemic times, the jobs in those sectors are growing. Um, anything that you see marked red, which are the two sectors, construction and manufacturing, those are the two sectors which are contracting. So there's a lot of job losses in those particular sectors. So in spite construction is the top sector of jobs, it is a sector which is shrinking. A lot of people are losing jobs in construction. Um, that, but there are some sectors which are really performing well, which is health, and there's nothing surprising. In a pandemic time, of course, health is going to be strong. Even when it was not pandemic, still health was a very strong sector. Retail and wholesale trade is a very strong sector from employment. Professional and technical services is great. Education has been performing really great. Uh, public administration, because we are a capital city, so there are a lot of public administration jobs, uh, mining, oil and gas. Uh, it, this sector was declining, um, you know, in the last two years, but now, you know, it is again rebounding again. And then we have uh, information computers technology, which is a new sector, and it's growing now. There are a lot of jobs now in this sector. It does account to only 2% jobs, but still there are a lot of good jobs, and they are highly paying jobs. Um, so again, the reason I'm showing you this labor uh, force breakdown is because the kind of programs we offer matches our local economy. So you may be, you know, when I just show you a program, it will not make sense. Like why Northwest College is offering these programs, these programs, and not these programs. Um, so I think one big advantage of studying in a community college is that our programs are a direct match with our economy. Uh, we are not offering a lot of programs in mechanical engineering, electrical engineering. Why? Because there are not many jobs in Edmonton. So we are not offering a program um, where there are less jobs within a city. So students will have difficulties finding job afterwards. Okay. So in short, the programs we are offering, uh, they are in demand and they are relevant to our local economy. And also, of course, this is the average uh, wages in different different sectors. So you can compare here and see what different job sectors, you know, what is the average uh, wages that people make in those sectors. Okay, going forward, uh, of course, this is our campus. So this is one of the buildings of campus, uh, Norquist College. So this is our downtown campus. Uh, we do have two campuses. The other campus is in the city of Vitasquin, which is roughly 80 kilometers. But again, it's not very far away from Edmonton. Uh, because Edmonton is, as I mentioned, is a big city spread out in around 60 to 70 kilometers. So it's not that far away from one end of the Edmonton. It's probably, you know, you can take a, a car ride and you can go to that campus as well. But again, I'll focus on this main downtown campus because 99% of our international students study in the main downtown campus. So a little bit about the college. So our college is a publicly funded community college. So we are a government college. Um, we, as I mentioned, we have a campus in downtown Edmonton. Uh, we serve roughly around 21,000 students. So we are a mid-sized college um, from a Canadian standard. Also something unique about us is our diversity. So 57% of our students are born outside of Canada. Uh, because our Edmonton's uh, population, 30 to 35% population, is new immigrants who are permanent residents who came from outside of Canada and now are Canadian citizens or permanent residents. So they make majority of our student population. So they are not international students. They already got permanent residency status in Canada. So they make majority of our student population. But they are very diverse groups. So that's why you see here more than 75 languages are spoken on our campus. We have students from more than 100 countries. So it's a very diverse group. So again, that gives a student a very uh, unique experience by interacting with people from so many different cultures. Um, 
also within those immigrant groups, the largest immigrant group in Edmonton is Filipinos. So Filipinos make the largest immigrant group. We even have a big community, a big association of Filipino community in Edmonton. And we even have Jollibee, um, you know, one of the I know, popular food chain. So we do have that also in Edmonton City. Okay, a little, uh, little bit about uh, the uniqueness of Northwest College, what is unique about us. So a lot of time, a lot of public colleges are very similar, but they are different based on what their focus is. So our uh, focus at Northwest College is the relevant skills. So as I mentioned before, uh, that the programs we offer are direct match of our local economy. So we are only offering those programs that are relevant to you. So we are not one of those colleges who claim we have more than 100 programs. So it's not about quantity of programs. It's about the quality of programs. Because at the end of the day, every student is looking for a job, looking for relevancy. What I learned in the school is that in even demand in the market. So I think that is the most important thing that we focus, relevant skills based on local economy. We also have a heavy focus on career readiness. Um, we have a, a very, um, I would say, professional and a big career center. We call it Work Integrated Learning and Career Education Center. So what they do is they do one-on-one -on -one advising. They give you a lot of advice on your building your resume, your CVs. They organize job fair. They even have their own job portal. So you can go on that job portal and then you um, apply for jobs. Um, so they definitely give you a lot of prep. They even offer prep courses so that you can do uh, your personality development, um, so you have a higher chance of getting a job. So career readiness is another big focus. Then something called the skills of distinction, uh, because just having relevant skills also does not fetch you a job. So you need to have a little bit more of skills, like your soft skills, how you talk to people, how you deal um, in conflict, how you manage people, if you're going to be a manager or supervisor. Okay, Do you even know uh, how to work in a multicultural environment because in Canada it's a multicultural society so they're not only just people of Philippines they're people from 100 countries so you need to know their culture how to behave in those cultures um, because a lot of those cultures are alien cultures so you're not used to those cultures but you have to adapt to it you have to get used to working with people from different cultures so that's something that is also focused and we do have interdevelopment uh, inter skills uh, intercultural skills that we offer at the college so you can definitely get those skills from us. Um, also, uh, Northwest College have a heavy impact on our community. So our students, once they graduate, uh, they of course work in Edmonton community. So they are contributing around more than $470 million in the local economy. So we have a huge impact on the economy of greater Edmonton. Also student experience is a big focus for us. Uh, so we do a lot of activities, a lot of things to support and enhance student experience. And I'm going to talk about that later. So you get a little bit idea. So the other focus is work integrated learning, uh, which means each and every program that we offer at the college, you will get some kind of practical, you will get some kind of skills. So work integrated learning, I'll explain that in the next slide, uh, what that means. It's mainly means practicum, co-op placement, but anyways, I'm going to explain a little bit more in the next slide, you'll get a more idea of what that means. So that is a huge focus. So through that uh, work integrated learning, we are making a connection with the employer. So you are not just sitting in a class and listening to your teacher, you're going out working in an organization, in a company. Um, and a lot of time our practicums in uh, the health and community study programs are unpaid, but the quality of practicum is very good. You're working with one of the best organization in Edmonton. Uh, also, if there are also opportunities for paid internship in some programs. So again, once we go through the programs, you will get a little bit more idea. We have small classroom. We have very high employment rate. So our employment rate on average has been 95% within six months of graduation. Of course, due to COVID has been a little bit impacted. So we are going to get our new numbers um, you know, pretty soon and then we'll see. But we are anticipating that number will a little bit go down uh, because of course in the economy, in the COVID economy, economy is opening up, economy is shutting down, opening up, shutting down. So of course, there's going to be a little bit impact. And then we have a lot of support services, which most colleges have, like student navigator, which has student advisors, tutorial services. So if you're not following anything in your class, you can go and ask for help. They will teach you. Uh, they will give you even tutoring classes outside the class for free. They're academic coaches. If you have to write an assignment, you need some help. 
So all those supports are available. We have immigration advisors, we have career advisors. So all those services which are available in our uh, Canadian Community College, all those services are available for you for free because of course you're paying for that in your tuition and fees. Okay, a little bit about uh, the work integrated learning. So as I mentioned before, uh, these work integrated learning uh, vary from program to program. In some program, it could be one uh, month. In some, it will be one week. Some, it could be four months. So it varies from program to program. And again, in our health and community study, it's mostly unpaid. Uh, so in our health, we call it clinical placements. In our community studies, we call it work placement. We also have some program which have community service learning. Also in our uh, business program, we have co-op. Um, paid co-ops in our environmental programs, we also have paid co-op, but those are competitive in nature, which means it's not guaranteed you'll get a paid co-op, you have to compete with students. And then we have professional certificate program, we have two, one is called supply chain, the other is called business analysis, and there's guaranteed paid internship in that uh, professional certificate, we'll talk about that. So you not only, um, you know, study that program, but you'll get an opportunity to work for three months in a company, and you get a salary of 15 to 18 dollars. Okay, so again, there's a lot of advantages of work integrated learning or practicum, because when you go and look for a job, the employers know that you had a, a shorter learning curve, but you know, you know your skills, you have hands on education, you have practical skills. So, you know, your chance of getting job is higher and you will be needing less training because you know your work. Okay, so that's a big advantage that a student gets when they study at Northwest, they get those practical skills. A uh, little bit about the assistance, the student assistance supports that we have. Um, as I mentioned before, we have academic support. Uh, we have academic advisors, academic strategists. We have prior tutors, writing specialists, academic coaches. So all these people help you if you don't succeed in your classroom. So there's a lot of help available. Also immigration advising and all that is there. Then student experience, as I mentioned before, is a big thing for us. So we have peer mentorship program. So for example, if you're coming for a business program and you say, I need to talk to a senior student from business who has done this program. So I get a little bit of idea. So yes, we do have students who can be your mentors, who can guide you that, okay, I, when I came, I did this mistake. You don't do this mistake. Okay, you're having this issue. You should go here. You should do this. So you're learning from senior students through the peer mentorship program. Uh, we have student association. So if you are a person who really like, uh, you know, politics, you want to run for a student association, you can do it. There are a lot of activities that are done by student association, a lot of games, a lot of events. Of course, due to now virtual space, it's limited. But when we were on the campus, then there were a lot of games. We have student clubs um, that you can join it, interact, do networking, a um, lot of events, there are cultural events. So there are a lot of things to do on campus. So it's not just about education but it's also about fun experience and networking. Um, also, we do have a lot of career readiness skills uh, available. We have volunteer opportunity. If you say, okay, I want to volunteer because volunteer is rated very highly when you're looking for a job in Canada. So you definitely have that opportunity as well. You will learn how to search for a job, what are the job searching techniques. So all those are skill set because in the future that will help you uh, when you're looking for jobs. So all those services are available for you for free. So again, you can take advantage of all that. A little bit about the programs. I'm going to go by faculty by faculty. So again, health program is the first faculty. This is an oversubscribed faculty because of course the employment rate is very high in this faculty. So as you can see for fall intake for September, 2021, pretty much all the programs are full. So we do have three kinds of programs. We have two-year diploma, one-year certificate, one-year post-diploma. So diploma and certificate students can apply after 12 years of education. So if a student from Philippines has done a new 12-year high school, they can apply to diploma, they can apply to certificate. Um, same thing if somebody has done the old 10-year high school and plus two years of university completion after that, then they can also apply to a certificate and diploma. If somebody has done the bachelor's degree, um, you know, the, and they completed that, then they can apply for our post-diploma programs as well, okay? So right now, as you can see the availability, we have only availability in winter 2022 for healthcare aid and for practical nursing program. So Northwest College has Canada's largest practical nursing and Canada's largest healthcare aid program. And the good thing for Filipino students is that you can get admission into 
all our programs except pharmacy technician. You can get into all our programs without IELTS as long as you have studied 12 years in Philippines. And plus you have a letter saying that your medium of instruction was English. If you have those two things, you can even get admission into practical nursing without an IELTS. Okay, so that's amazing. Uh, the only exception is pharmacy technician because of the, um, the pharmacy council rules. So any student who's applying from outside of Canada has to give an IELTS and uh, they have to get 6.5 with Nobel less than six. So this is the tuition fee that you see here. This is for all two years. This includes tuition fee, health insurance, dent insurance, all those kind of things. And now coming to community studies, uh, we have programs which are one year certificate like early learning, community support worker, educational assistant. And a lot of these certificates have laddering opportunity, which means you do one year certificate, you go directly to the second year of early learning and child care diploma. You do a one year community support worker. You can go directly to the second year of settlement studies, which I'll show you in the next slide. But we do have some standalone program like educational assistant, which does not transfer to another program. But again, they are popular by themselves because educational assistant are critical uh, role in our high school. So if anyone wants to work in high school from kindergarten to grade six in a school um, system, yeah, they can do the educational assistant. So these are mainly uh, the positions with the main teacher in the high school system. Okay, so all the programs, um, I think I just forgot to mention one thing. So in health programs, all programs have practicum, but they are unpaid practicum. And again, we have a clinical placement team who will find the practicum so students don't have to worry. And it's mandatory. You have to do it, otherwise you'll not graduate from the program. Same thing in these programs. A lot of these programs have mandatory practicum. Again, it's unpaid, but you will get that practicum. We will find it for you. And the students will get that experience that they need. Um, also, we do have mental health addiction recovery post diploma. So we have a lot of students uh, from Philippines who are applying, who are nursing graduates, who are pharmacy graduates, who are health graduates in general, or graduates from psychology, sociology, those kind of backgrounds who are applying to mental health and addiction recovery. And again, students usually find jobs in senior homes, um, also in the rehab centers. So of course, there's a lot of uh, opportunities after that. Uh, we have early learning and child care diploma. We have child and youth care diploma. So again, from the program availability point of view, uh, the programs, we have seats available in community support worker educational assistant right now for September. For winter, we have availability as well for mental health and early learning and child care. We also have uh, right now seats available in child and youth care diploma as well uh, for the um, September intake. And again, all these programs have practicum, but in different forms. Some program have community service learning, some program have practicum, but again, they are mandatory. So students have to do it. So they'll acquire skills. Then we have here programs like disability studies, social work, justice, settlement studies. So all these programs also have practicum and they are very in-demand programs. And we have seats available right now in disability studies, justice programs, part of social work. So disability studies is for those students who want to work with children who have autism, Down syndrome, Alzheimer patient, dementia patient. Social work is a very high demand profession. Uh, again, we have very limited seats. Um, but again, if you are interested to work in social work, settlement studies is another option for someone who wants to work with new immigrants. And justice is mainly focused on the criminal justice of Canada, investigation techniques, um, youth law, indigenous law, those kind of things. And again, all these programs that you see here also have unpaid practicum, but again, the practicum is there. And of course, the fees is here for two-year diploma program that you're able to see here. Now, coming to business and environmental science programs. So we have two certificate in business program, accounting technician, administrative professional. These two programs uh, do have uh, optional practicum uh, for one month in each program. And again, these programs are also very high demand because accounting technicians are required in, in high numbers in Canada and even in Alberta. And uh, these programs are, as you can see, are offered in three intakes. So we have seats available right now in all three intakes for accounting technician, administrative professional. Business is a very popular program because we do have four specialization in it. Uh, we have um, finance, accounting, management. We also have human resource management. This program also business has a paid internship option. Again, it's comparative. It's not guaranteed you'll get it. So you have to compete with other students. And if you get it, then you'll go and work for four months and get some internship. Right now, our September intake is full. 
uh, but you can apply for winter 2022. Uh, we may uh, open more seats um, in September, but we're not 100% sure right now. But of course, if you're interested in business, I would recommend you to apply for winter 2022. Um, and if you want to come in fall only, then you can even opt for accounting technician program because nine courses out of 10 courses of accounting technician transfer to business diploma. So you pretty much have a kind of one plus one option also with accounting technician and business. Uh, we have environmental protection technology. This is a very popular program for someone who have bachelors of science, um, bachelor of science of agriculture, technology, environmental science. So they are coming and doing this program. This program is also very hands-on. So you'll do, do uh, doing a lot of field work. So you'll be going and collecting samples of sand, water, those kind of things. And this program also has a four months uh, peer regular program among age related program as well as management school. So students who graduate from energy management work as project managers in um, oil and gas sector, energy sector, uh, energy consultants, energy auditors. So it's also a very good program. Uh, and this program also has a flight it's not guaranteed that you'll get it. So you have to compete with other students, okay? Um, so these are our, our programs here. Um, now coming to this, so we do all have this program called Teaching English as a Bachelor's Degree Can Apply. So this program is for those students, um, you know, who are teachers who have done Bachelor of Education, Master of Education, Bachelor of Arts, um, Masters of Arts Canada. So once they graduate, they will be able to work in a school, university, or a college program it has 50 hours of practicum. And again, we will find that practicum for the students. Uh, now for some students who don't meet our program, and this is mainly for students because we uh, sometimes encounter students from Philippines who only studied 10 year high school and then they didn't study anything after that. Or they, but they didn't study two years because we need 12 years education. So they didn't do that 12 year education and they're missing that. So in that case, they can do a Northwest bridging program to apply to any of our programs. But those students who have studied less than 12 years, they have to also give an English language students who have studied at least 12 years in Philippines. Okay, so that's another path in Philippines. We have this new program. This is a non-credit program. So it's a little different than other programs. So the difference between credit, you know, I was showing you before, they're all credit program, which means some of these programs transfer one to another. As I was showing you, you do one. So that transfer options are available in credit program. In non-credit program, that transfer option is not available. Uh, but what is the benefit of professional certificate is that this program prepares you for a professional designation. So this program prepares you for SCMP, supply chain management professional. So, the same, so that helps you to find a job afterwards. And that is valued, that designation is valued a lot in Canada. The other big thing that you get in, in this program is a guaranteed paid internship. So this program has a three months paid internship, which everyone will get it who goes into this program in the field of supply chain. So you earn 50 to $18 for three months. So whatever money you're putting in this, you're going to earn some back also. Um, and also the third thing is that this program are eligible for post-grad work permit. So you will, if you do this one year program, you will get a one year post-grad. We have another one professional certificate which is called business analysis. So that is a business analysis professional certificate. Uh, those uh, right now applications are open for this program for September. So you can apply. So those are one plus one. If you do this one year program, you can do another business analysis one year program. You can combine them together and you can get a three year work permit. And in both programs, business analysis and supply chain, we have a three months paid internship that every student. And again, the requirement for this program is because for Filipino students, you don't need to worry about IELTS because you're away from IELTS if you have done 12 year education. And this program requires a diploma or a degree. If you've done a two year diploma or a degree from Philippines, yes, you can apply for this program. And this is the cost for the full one year um, that you will be doing, including books and everything. Okay, so I already mentioned, I think I don't, I'll not repeat it here because these are the countries which is which are exempt from English language proficiency. So I already mentioned Philippines is exempted. You can get admission without an IELTS um, as long as you have studied 12 years. So I already told it, And but any, anybody less than 12 years, they have to give English language exam. Uh, so this is our English language exams. So if you're a student who only studied 10 year high school, the old high school system, and in, you didn't study anything after that, in that case, if you're applying to business program, then you need an IELTS 6 with no better less than 5.5 or a Duolingo. Um, if you're applying for health programs or community, you need this much IELTS, this much Duolingo. For pharmacy, every student, whether you study 12 years or not, because that's the only program that does not give the IELTS waiver, uh, you need to give IELTS and get 6.5 with no pen less than six. In nursing program, also only those students who didn't study 12 years in Philippines, they have to, of course, score the IELTS or TOEFL to get into the program. But any anyone who, sorry, so anyone who studied 12 years, they don't have to worry about it, except the pharmacy. Okay. Uh, so I hope that is clear. 
Um, also, um, there's one more thing. So our admission process is very accessible. So for example, if you apply to our program and we say, you know what, you don't meet our maths requirements, sorry. Um, then you, okay. So of course, any will get disappointed. Oh, I didn't meet the requirement. Now what? Now what are my options? So you have three options. So the first option is you can email testing at northwest.ca. You can say, I want to do a free exam online free exam of maths. If, if the maths is the course that you didn't meet the requirement, you do your online exam. If you pass that exam, you're in the program. You are going directly to that program. And the result of that exam is valid for five years. So if you think, okay, I'm not going to start my program this year, I'm going to start next year, that passing marks will be valid for next year because it's valid for five years. Uh, if you don't pass that exam, then you can do online academic maths course. So you can do an online course in Philippines, and once you do that course, then you can start and apply in the program. The third option is you can apply to Northwest Bridging Program. That okay, when I come to Canada and I get my visa, I arrive there, then I will do my maths course in Canada or even online because in this current scenario, you can do from anywhere. So, so these are the three options for you. So we are removing barriers for students um, in order to get into the program. Okay, so this is how the program works. It's usually two to four semesters. And then of course, um, you know, once you do that, then you'll be able to get into your target program and then you graduate from your target program. But you will have a seat uh, you know, reserved in a target program through your bridging program. So it's not that you're doing your bridging program, but you're not sure whether I'll get a seat in my program. No, we will reserve a seat for you in the target program. Okay, um, so this is again, uh, English language scores. I don't think that is valid for Philippines because if you study 12 years in Philippines, you don't have to worry about IELTS score. A uh, little bit about the admission, so again, the CIS team is here. So of course, they will be able to guide us. They are our premier partner in Philippines and they've sent us many applications. So they know our process. So I'll only mention a few things and rest you can connect with them because they are our host today and they can guide you further about application. Um, and the main things that I will focus here is the application fee. So our application fee is $150 that you have to pay. It's an online application. And again, CIS team is going to help you. Uh, when you are uh, going to go because they directly represent Northwest College. Um, also, um, you know, you will be needing to send us a scan documents. And again, that again, the CS team will do it on your behalf. They'll send us your documents, scan copies. You'll get admission based on the scan copies initially, and then you get an offer letter, and then you have to pay $1,000 tuition deposit. That's all we need. And then your seat is reserved. But we also need your official documents. And then you will have to courier that as your uh, official documents. And we give a month or two months time. Of course, if due to COVID, things are closed, you cannot go there. Then of course, you can ask admissions team, can you extend my deadline? And of course, they are very, uh, they are very understanding. They know things are not right all over the world because of COVID situation. And of course, you can then apply for your visa and that's, that's the way uh, the admission process works. So technically, we don't need anything more than $1,000 from you to pay to the college to reserve your seat. And the rest of the money you can pay once you arrive in Canada and you pay semester by semester. Uh, but again, from visa point of view, sometimes students pay one year fee, one semester fee, depending on what category of student visa they're applying, whether they're applying for STS or they're applying to a general student visa stream. Um, we do have scholarship. I'll not spend again too much time because I know it is a lengthy presentation. So I want to give you the opportunity to ask questions. So the scholarships, yeah, we do have entrance scholarship in few programs. So we, we give $1,000 scholarship for the only students who have a certain percentage in their previous education in Philippines, in your case. And also they have to write a letter. So those are the two criteria. And it's not in all programs. So it, it's our only in the few programs that we're offering entrance scholarship. Uh, but we do have ongoing scholarships. You can see here ongoing scholarship. So this is for students in every program. And this is for those students who start with us and they can apply every semester for scholarship and they can get anywhere from one to 2000. We have a lot of Filipino students who have got consecutively in three semesters, like $2,000 scholarship in each semester because they, they were really high performing students. So we look at your percentage and then we look at other criteria also depending on different, different awards that we have at the college. Okay, so this is a little bit about, oh, sorry, I missed it. So this is a little bit about the COVID situation in Alberta. So as you can see here, COVID situation in Alberta is again resurging. So this was the June, this is again, it, it really increased cases in um, you know December, January, then it went down. And now again, the COVID situation is really 
you know, high, not just in Alberta, but all over Canada, but still Alberta is doing very good. I know in Ontario and Quebec, there have been lockdowns, whereas in um, uh, Alberta, things are still not so bad. So definitely we, we have a better situation, uh, but right now the variants, there are different, different variants or mutant variants are coming in different parts of the world. So we definitely have that situation right now. So there are restrictions still in Alberta. Um, and again, the um, vaccination drive on the positive side is very good. 25% of Albertans have got their first dose of vaccine. And also, uh, you know, the 2.4% of the people have got even their second dose. And also for international students who are coming to Alberta, anyone who come to Alberta after three, three months of their stay in Alberta, if they are on a study visa, they are also eligible to get vaccinated in Alberta. So if you come as a student, you stay for three months, and, and you're not vaccinated in Philippines, uh, you are eligible to uh, get vaccinated depending on what age bracket you are in. Because right now, Alberta is doing vaccination for anyone 40 years or above. I think very soon they're going to do 30 years or above. And then I think they're going to do for everyone 18 years or above. Um, so that's, we'll see you know, what that happens, but the students will be able to get vaccinated after three months of stay in Alberta. Okay, uh, so also I think right now the traveling is very tricky. Um, in um, in COVID times. Um, so we are here to support you. Uh, we have a dedicated email called travel.safe at nautilus.ca. So if anyone is traveling, uh, you know, we have full support available to our student services team. So once you've got your visa and if you're coming to us and you say, I need help, uh, yes, we email that email and then we will guide you further how to plan your arrival at uh, Canada because things are changing on a daily basis. In the COVID times, new rules are coming. So you have to get um, you, you need to know what rules are there when you travel. Uh, and also, again, in Northwest College, there are many things to do. I mentioned before, there's student politics. So you can become a student assistant leader. You can even run for president of student association, a student council. So you can become a really active member if you like to be a leader. Also, there are a lot of student clubs. Um, there's mentorship program I mentioned before, networking. We also are doing virtual engagement. So even right now when we're studying online, uh, there are a lot of things you can do. You can do weekly live chat and all that. So you're connected with the other students uh, while you're studying with us. Again, this is my last two slides and then we'll come to the questions. So right now, I think a lot of students are coming to Canada. They're not choosing other countries. Like used to people go to Australia and New Zealand. Why are they coming to Canada? Uh, because Canada has a very straightforward immigration to education program. Um, and again, a lot of students who are coming do have that intention to stay back in Canada. And definitely Canada wants that because Canada is looking for new immigrants. So usually that's the way you do your, you get your study permit, you get a eligible program, you get a postgrad work permit for three years or one year or two years, depending how long you study. Then you work for one year and then you're eligible to apply. Uh, but again, in Alberta, it's even a little easier. So in Alberta, and especially in Alberta opportunity stream, students, if they've done a two-year diploma, one-year post back period, or a post uh, diploma program, you just need six months experience in field of study. And then of course you can apply uh, for immigration uh, option after that. We even have our express entry. So express entry is a mean system or point system through which students get immigration. So if you're in Toronto and Vancouver, usually you need little higher points around 450, 460, 470. But in Alberta, you can get selected by even as low as 300 points. So it's it's little easier to immigrate. A very favorable immigration wise, looking to immigrate more than four hundred thousand people this year, then four hundred eleven next year. For a little announcement that Canada is giving even immigration this year to up to forty thousand international students, who even just graduated from a school, even don't have any experience. They said very welcoming for international students, and they want to retain international students once they graduate. So of course, this is again another opportunity for people who are coming to study. Uh, so this is again our contact information but again you don't have to directly connect with us you can connect with cis team and they are here to help you uh, because they they are our direct partner and they've sent us many applications so definitely they're able to guide you about the process and everything okay so we'll come to questions and we'll see what kind of questions are there from the students Okay, thanks for that, Saram, for your um, informative presentation. So right now, let's go uh, for the questions. Okay, uh, for the first question, uh, just to clarify, IELTS is waived if letter of certification stating that the MOI is English, uh, MOI is the English language will be presented. Yes, uh, you'll only need a English certificate from your college from mm -hmm. the last college that you've attended, and then um, no need for the IELTS exam. Yeah, that is correct. 
Okay, uh, I think th uh, the uh, question is for you, Sarab. If I'm a bachelor's degree holder mm -hmm. of information technology, can I also apply to post diploma certification for community studies? Yeah, you can apply. Yeah, you can pick a program from community studies. You can also pick a program like professional certificate. I was talking about supply chain. I was talking about uh, business analysis. A lot of IT professionals are going to that as well. So there are a lot of options um, that you don't have to be just in IT if you graduate from IT, because again, it's a very wide spectrum of fields that you can go into. But anytime you're changing your field of study, you have to mention it in your study plan. So when you're applying for your study visa, you have to mention uh, the rationale of changing your field of study and what kind of career outcome you're going to get after that. So yes, that's something to keep in mind. Okay, perfect. Also, there's a question. Um, do you have any accredited off-campus accommodation for international students or Norquist have uh, on-campus residence? So we don't have on-campus residence because we have a downtown campus, but yes, we do recommend students to um, go for apartments which are outside or there are many uh, property management companies, they have apartments and all that. So yes, we do recommend them. We have information on our website. If they connect with us, yes, we will share that information with them. We even have a social worker in our department, which is called Center for Growth and Harmony. So they are also going to guide you um, if you need more assistance on accommodation. Okay, great. Um, there's also a question in our Facebook page. Uh, mm -hmm. How much is the fee for business analysis program? So business analysis is the same. It's around 17500 Again, the fees is 16,000, but I'm including everything in it. 1,500 is the cost of books and everything. So I'm giving you all inclusive price. So that's a one year program and it will have three semesters in it, a three to four, I think so. And, but you'll be done within a one year. And that program has a three months paid internship, which everyone will get. So you'll be able to get three months internship as well. And you can get anywhere from 15 to $18 of salary. Okay, perfect. Like for the next question from Miss Anne, uh, can I bring my dependent? So uh, for study visa, ma'am, you can actually bring your, or you, you can declare your accompanying dependents to come with you to Canada, um, as long as it is your immediate family, like your spouse and your kids. So we can file your application all together and we can possibly receive your visa result um, at the same time as well. But of course, it will um, actually depend on your um, decision if you're also considering other factors like for the funds, uh, for the home ties and all. Um, it's either you can go first and then once you're settled in Canada, we can process next the papers of your dependents. But we can also um, process your papers or your documents all together as a family. Okay, uh, okay, for our next mm -hmm. question from our Facebook page. Can my spouse with an open work permit apply under Alberta's provincial nominee program? Sarab? Um, yeah, there is a possibility, but I think more options are for the principal applicant who has uh, studied in Canada. So it depends. So for example, if your spouse is on an open work permit and they acquire a one-year experience in Canada, um, on a NOC O, A, and B, which, which means they'll be then eligible for express entry. So in that case, yes, they could apply through express entry if they get enough points uh, and they have a job in Alberta, they have worked one year in Alberta. So yes, in that case, they can apply uh, express entry. Whereas the Alberta opportunity stream, uh, there are options, but for that, usually your spouse will be needing an LMIA, uh, which is usually a little tougher pathway, but for Alberta opportunity stream for six months experience, and then apply, um, the main student who is who is studied in Alberta will be a better applicant. Okay, perfect. Oh, uh, we have a question from our Facebook. IELTS is not required yet for the study visa. Yes, um, it will actually depend on your chosen school, but for Northwest, they don't require IELTS and you have the option to apply for regular stream since regular stream don't require an IELTS. But if you prefer to apply under study direct stream, which is uh, a month or less than a month processing time, IELTS is actually a requirement for you to be eligible to apply for SDS. And also his question is, um, is IELTS really required for PR pathways for immigration purposes? Uh, uh, can you allow me for this, Sarah? Yeah, yeah. So I think for any immigration pathway, yes, IELTS is required. Um, and IELTS general stream, not the academic stream. 
so if you give an IELTS general stream, it will be required or a CELPIC is required. So either is, is acceptable by immigration. So yes, you have to, even if you apply through Alberta Opportunity Stream, yes, you have to give an IELTS. If you apply through Express Entry, yes, you can have to apply to IELTS. So English language proficiency score is one of the main criteria for immigration. Okay, perfect. Oh, just to clarify, Sarah, uh, I the only program that IELTS is required in Northwest for Filipinos is for the pharmacy technician, right? That is correct. Okay. But for the practical nursing, you don't, uh, you no. already also waive this, right? Yes, we, we have IELTS for practical nursing also, yeah. Okay, perfect. Uh, speaking of practical nursing, do you have any other program suggestions for our um, registered Filipino ner uh, nurses? Yeah, we, right now we have mental health and addiction recovery, but very soon we are coming with a new program um, that will be called uh, Internationally Educated Nurses Program. And that will be for someone who has already a bachelor's of nursing and they will have a different program than regular practical nursing program and they will be able to do and then they will be able to become a licensed practical nurse so that's a new program again we don't have it right now but currently in the programs that we have we recommend students to either get into our practical nursing we recommend students to either do our mental health recovery program addiction recovery programs and even some students even do healthcare aid programs because all health or allied health, because mental health and addiction we call allied health. So all those programs do have a very high employment rate because there's a huge shortage right now in Alberta for nurses, for healthcare rates, even mental health professionals. Um, overall, there's a shortage. So any programs you do, any of them, uh, you'll new have a high that, The credential that the students will gonna earn this new program. Yeah, so that, yeah, so that program is going to be called PN Refresher, Practical Refresher. The criteria of that program is going to be um, that we need, um, you know, a students who have done at least a Bachelor of Nursing, not Diploma of Nursing, but Bachelor of Nursing. From The Filipino students are anyways uh, exempt from IELTS. So we do have IELTS requirement of six in each band, but that's not first. Then, of course, they have done studied 12 years or more already um, in Philippines. So that's the main criteria. Is to have a Bachelor of Nursing, you can go to that program. So we are going to launch that program very soon. Um, so once we open our application, then I'll share the information with you. Okay, perfect. Um, okay, so far we don't have any other questions in our Q and A box. So, Paige, can you further um elaborate about the program? Sure. Of supply so the chain supply management? chain management program. I'm going to go back to it. So just when I'm talking about it, it's there on the screen. So it's is still there. So supply chain is a professional certificate. It's a non-credit program. So right now as a, as essential services. So there, there has been even more demand right now in supply chain in pandemic time. So this program, uh, once you complete this program, you can uh, you know, aim to become a certified a supply chain a management uh, professional. There are other criteria you have to pass an exam. There are certain other criteria you have to go through. But this program will lead you to that. In this program, uh, you will get a three months of paid internship. Um, and then you will be going and working and you'll be getting a salary of 50 to 18 dollars for three months so this program will help you to acquire all the knowledge that you need to be successful in supply chain three months of experience in the field of supply chain and of course you can in future get a postgrad work permit as well as you can management professional so these are all the benefits that you have for this program and this program is available in september 2021 and right now our plan i, I forgot to mention one thing all our programs we have planned because Alberta government had announced uh, that, uh, you know, that the institution should plan to go on campus in September. Again, we don't know what's going to happen in September because COVID is such uncertain. We don't know when things change. But as of now, our planning is to go back to campus in September and to offer change. And COVID again resurges in September for to offer this program also face uh, online, I mean. Okay, so that's the study 12 years in philippines you don't you can get admission without an IELTS. please read us rab again okay. in our facebook or um, i remarks so rab do you have any for our viewers yeah definitely i would say that uh, you know if you're planning to study in canada um for september i think this is the high time to apply because it's taking longer right now to process your visa it's taking anywhere from two to three months um even sometime even longer than that so i would recommend uh you know by 15th of May, you should apply, select a program and get your offer letter. So that's something is very important. If you, you know, if you are planning for even January, 
2022. Yes, our uh, applications are open for January 2022 right now. You can even apply for January programs right now. So both intakes, September and January are right now uh, available and you can apply right now and get admission into those programs. That's all I will say, uh, because right now the traveling is very tricky. Every visa is taking longer time. So your processing time is becoming longer. So as earlier you start your planning, that is better for you. Okay, I agree. Time, our time and your effort and all. Opportunity to talk to the students. Okay, okay. take care, everybody. Okay, okay. okay. thanks, Sarah. Have, have a good day. Friends, right after this presentation, our website, the book your appointment with one of our uh, senior. Um, thanks for joining us and have a great day. Bye.